Vince Tomac captured round seven a week ago at Millville, Minnesota. But it was Blake Baggett who brought the wow factor to Spring Creek. Tomac is definitely the aggressor in this group. He is looking for ways around Baggett, and Baggett goes to the inside. Takes wow. him to Marsha, makes a mistake. Oh, he leans a bike over, just slides out a little bit. Woo. Ryan Dungey once again dominated the 450 class in a fashion befitting a former series champion. In front of the hometown crowd, the friends and family, Ryan Dungey wins at Millville. Live coverage of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship rolls on from Washougal, Washington. We've reached the beautiful Pacific Northwest as the Columbia River Gorge and Portland, Oregon lies not too far from Washougal, Washington, host site of round eight of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship sanctioned by MA Pro Racing. This is the Peterson Cat Washougal National. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pacific Northwest. Jason Wygant joined by four-time AMA National Champion Jeff Emig for Fuel's continuing live coverage of motocross. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're going to be following in our first 450 class moto of the day. Of course, the dominance of Ryan Dungey pulling away in the series standings, winning races and motos every single weekend. We come into Washougal just like we were in Minnesota last weekend, wondering if anyone can stop him. But a different type of racetrack today. Traction is an issue here. We have left the tacky set. Sandy soils behind, and it's going to be a struggle for all the riders and teams to find the right setup today. You know, in practice, it looked like some riders might have the drop on Dungy, but when it was all over, Dungy logged one fast lap at the end of the session to capture the fastest qualifying time. But it was very much wide open before that. We swing it back over to you, Jeff. Quite a battle in practice. It looked like riders like, say, Michael Lessie might have something for Dungy today. Yeah, Michael Lessie and a host of other rider, riders were really fast earlier today in qualifying practice. And Mother Nature helped us out, gave us a little bit of rain on Thursday night. The track is in perfect condition. I mean, epic. I wish that I was out there riding. But this is the type of track that, let's say, a guy like Michael Lessie, Jake Weimer, if they get the whole shot and get out front, they can possibly notch a win. And, and try to, because that's the goal for everyone except for Dungy, is just to try to beat him in one moto and get the ball rolling. The temperatures are much cooler than what we've seen uh, in this past month. So today is the day. If anybody's going to beat Dungy, it could be today. All right, definitely set for an exciting day in motocross racing. For more, let's send it to Tiffany Simons on the starting line. Jake, last week you had the best finish of your season so far, taking home a second and a third. What do you think was behind that strong showing? Uh, I mean, it was a mixture of things. I got pretty decent starts both motos, which uh, at this point is just huge. So, um, yeah, I mean, the good starts helped, and it, it was a pretty hot day, and uh, I felt pretty strong all day. So, uh, but the biggest thing right now is just getting up front early. We'll keep that momentum going. Good luck to you today. Now let's make our way over to the points leader, Ryan Dungey. And, Ryan, I've heard this track described in many ways today. Some say it's deceiving. Others say it's tricky. How would you characterize the conditions out here? Uh, this is a really a kind of a, a one of the most technical tracks. You know, it's, a, it's got a kind of a harder base with some loamy on the top. So it tends to get pretty uh, harsh and, and pretty hard pack and, um, and rough as well. But, uh, you know, I think uh, they, they hauled a little bit of dirt in, which was nice. But uh, it's great. Practice was awesome. Had some good moisture in it still. And uh, bike was running good as well, so just uh, try to get off to a start and see what we can do. Good luck to you today. Thank you. We'll see if the Ryan Dungey Express can roll on here in the Pacific Northwest. Last week, Michael Leslie got out front of the first Moto Dungey at a bad start. He worked his way past Jake Weimer for second, then set his sights on the 800. Unless he did everything he could to hold him back, but Dungey made the move. A great battle inside the top five. But Dungey eventually able to pull away and get that Moto win. And then in the Moto 2, an even better start for the Dungey. Put him in the number one spot. Guys like Brayton Wyman and Lessie ran strong, but they couldn't stop the Red Bull KTM man there. Can they do it today? Find out next. The Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by the championship proven Kawasaki KX450F. Ride like a champion. Back here at Washougal, 450 riders. Going to be getting underway here in just a minute here on Fuel TV. Let's give you the 411, show you the race format. We will race two classes today, 450 and then 250 bikes. 
Each class will race two motos. Each race lasts 30 minutes and two laps. We total up the scores from both races in each class to determine an overall winner for the day. That's your format. And now let's give you a look at the racetrack. It's our Kawasaki track map brought to you by the championship proven Kawasaki uh, KX250F engineered for the moment of proof. Jeff. Well, take a look at this track. It is gorgeous. The track is in great condition. Watch the arrow here. That is what they call horsepower hill. There's a little roller right in the middle that you have to keep the rear wheel down to keep the power on. Now, I walked all the way up here today in qualifying practice. Those two drop-offs where the arrow just went are serious downhills. They make that 180 come back up. Of course, the ski jump. It's like you jump into an ocean of people into the main spectating area. Now you've got this massive triple tabletop here. Back into the trees where it's going to get a little bit shadowed. There's some shade in there. Big, uh, you know, uh, step up double there. Now down through this freeway that runs down into the trees, it's really dark through there. And with the moisture in the track, the dirt is dark, so it's going to be really technical and tricky there. Of course, this gnarly whoop section as you come past the start finish line, back through the old first turn area. This is where the track starts to tighten up quite a bit. It's getting really rutted. It's getting really technical through there. You're going to come back around and head towards the mechanics area, and then you've got to make a left and do it all over again. Good job, Jeff. Well done here. Thank you, Jeff. I think you've run some laps in this track before. Let's put our focus on the number 800 of Mike Alessi. Eight years ago, he broke into the pro ranks with a lot of hype, a lot of attention, and about as many wins as an amateur as anyone ever. Unable to deliver on his championship hopes thus far in his pro career, and now has actually ended up on a privateer team, a team without support from the factories. But as it has turned out, this Moto Concepts team might be the best fit Mike has seen yet in his career. He's putting together great results. He's second in the series, and he's looking for his first win of the year, and possibly today could be the day. So why is the Moto Concepts team the perfect fit for Mike Alessia and his family? We had an opportunity to talk to them about that. Let's get to know Mike and his Moto Concepts squad. Obviously last year, um, coming to the end of the season, I didn't have a ride, and uh, Mike Genova came to us and, uh, and offered a, a ride to, to be part of the team. It was an opportunity for me that I felt that I could come on and, and be a part of a family atmosphere and kind of be able to reestablish myself and to ride the motorcycle that I wanted to. I've always wanted Mike Lessons, my most favorite rider of all time. He's, uh, you know, he's just a great guy and a great worker and a great racer. And a lot of the reasons he's that way is because that's really who his dad is also. Hard worker, humble, nice person. There's finally a feeling of uh, being wanted. I know that sounds strange because we've been on factory teams, but where, uh, you know, you come into the pits and they're happy to see you and they're glad that you're there. Like in any of the sport, you know, you got to have your family there and supporting you. And uh, with my dad there, you know, it's it's a great it's a great feeling. I actually get to come here and work with Mike and the bike, and for me, it's just a dream come true to be honest. With you. We're racing against the factory boys and 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 doing the best that we can, putting it on the box or trying to at least week in week out and be in there. I have that backing and that support that's helping me push to be better, faster, and stronger every single weekend and, and striving to win races, and it feels great. It's been a great season so far for Mike, and who knows, it could get better with a couple more races yet to run. Yeah, and this is this thing is all about a chemistry, and mm -hmm. with Moto Concepts, uh, Mike and his father, Tony, you know, there was always a lot of friction with the other factory teams, and here they have found their place. Speaking of finding his place on the starting gate, Josh Hill is going to be batting for his uh, the Dodge uh, Hart Huntington Kawasaki team. Now, this is the rider who had a lot of promise, comes out of this neck of the woods. You can see he's originally from Oregon, beset by a tremendous amount of injuries the last couple of years. This is really going to be his first race in two years. Missed all of last year with a broken leg. Tried to race first Supercross of the year, re-injured himself. This is going to be interesting to see how Hill does. It's, it's going to be challenging for him to step into the championship at this point. Yep. But he's ultra talented. He works hard. We'll see what he can do here today at Washougal. Certainly going to lot of, have a lot of support from the fans. Let's go racing here live on Fuel TV. Alessi going to lead them into the first turn. But right behind him is Josh Grant on the Kawasaki and then Dungy. Grant was fast here today, but I'm telling you, Jason, 
If you've ever been up Horsepower Hill, the roost is coming off the back of those 450s. It is so gnarly and it hurts. I would want to be in Mike Gillespie's position right now to be dishing out the pain instead of everybody else that's going to be taking it in. Although I'll say, Grant in second, he'll be glad to take that roost. I talked to him earlier today. He said he feels everything is good this year at the bike. He feels good about his riding. It's just the starts. He said if he can get a good start, he feels he can run with these boys. Second place, he's got an opportunity. Yeah, and if you notice, Josh Grant here, 33 on this green Kawasaki, he's wearing a full chest protector front and back. A lot of the riders, Michael Byrne, Optid, who typically doesn't use the chest pro, he's wearing one here today. But the competition is on. The track is great. Like I said earlier, the temperature's good. This is a prime time for a rider to get out front. And all the major players, the fastest guys in qualifying practice, are right up front at the start of this race. You've got Weimer, who's actually made the move around Dungy for third. That'll push Dungy back to the number four position. Up here at the top of the racetrack, then they're going to jump back in, back in view of the fans. And I believe that's Andrew Short on the Chaparral Honda. Yes, on the number 29, who's fifth behind Dungy as Dungy tries to go to work on Weimer, who is in third. Yeah, so Short is the first Honda, but earlier today in qualifying, it was actually Tommy Hahn on the factory Honda. Yeah. He was absolutely flying. Of course, one week ago, he had a great first moto, and we didn't see him the second moto. He actually had an allergic reaction, so missed the second moto, but he is back and he is fired up. Watch this replay right here. This is Jimmy Albertson. Oh. Once again, just like last week, has a pretty good start and goes down on the first lap. And that is, whoa, Dungy, feet yeah. off the pegs. Starting to find some of those slippery spot outs and spots out there already. This is just the beginning of the first moto. Look how rough and rutted the track is already in certain sections. Pretty good in others. Dungy trying to zero in here on the 21. And then you can see Alessi and Grant beginning to get away from them. But this was kind of the scenario last week. Weimer not so strong early in the moto, but really turned it up in the second half. Dungy now in a drag race with Weimer up Horsepower Hill. Dungy kept the power to the ground. They both launch over the top, going up to the highest part of the track. Dungy's trying to go around the outside. Then there's two drop-offs. He does Whoa. it. Whoa! How do you make that happen, Jeff, around the outside? Commitment. Commitment. If I was Weimer, I would have pushed Dungy off into the weeds. <laughs> He's on your right-hand side, just nudge him out. But Dungy, he's on it. What can you say? This is, uh, he's got the red plate on his bike because he's the points leader, okay? Best well, guy okay. in the world hey, right now. You, 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 look at you started it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little deeper on this. Dungy's won a lot of races in a row. He's the points leader, like you said. Is it time for some of the riders to maybe start racing him that way? I would. I mean, yeah. but you know me, so <laughs> that's, hey. You, you know, it's, the thing is, is you got a rider like Dungy who, since he started winning at Lakewood, he's been unbeatable. And so what you have to do is you gotta, you gotta get a little tough. You gotta take him out of his rhythm, right? That's not what Dungy wants to hear, but if you gotta try something, right? Because speed-wise, you just can't run with him. Fitness-wise, you can't run with him. So get him out of his comfort zone. Maybe throw an elbow. We'll see. He's got several riders still to work on. Look at the gap that Alessi and Grant have built up on Dungy right now. And Short sticking with Weimer, our top five close. And then there's Brayton on the factory uh, team uh, Honda Muscle Machine in sixth. Tommy Hahn, who you mentioned was fast in practice, 18th. Bad start for him. That's Brayton's teammate. Here's Dungey going to work, although he has been very patient this year. We've seen him in this position several times. The riders get the drop on him early, and then he starts putting the heat on. Yeah, he's he's been really patient, and you can only be patient like that when you're confident and you, you really feel that you've got what it. Oh, and Grant oh, goes down whoa. hard. Whoa! And I was worried Dungey was going to land on him. Luckily, Grant was uh, had that hay bale in the way, and Dungey was able to escape. Man, that was a hard crash. Grant definitely shaking up. And man, just wow. when it looked like a rider who really needed some momentum was about to get some, that it all goes was, away from Grant. That was unbelievable. That was so vicious. And that's what this track can do. Just when you think you've got a lot of traction and it's nice and tacky, you hit one of these, one of these slick spots. And they start to come up once the track starts to dry out. Because underneath, this hard clay is pretty gnarly. Just seen Dungy kind of fiddling around with the tear off there, and it looks like he might have yanked all of his tear offs off. Sometimes oh. they get stuck, sometimes they're just a little finicky. Kind of hard to see right now, but 
So just explain that to the audience at home. If he catches up to Alessi and starts catching that dirt, what happens then? Well, it, it, you're going to have to use your visor. You, you really have to uh, dip your head and look. Look at the lead. Yeah. Like Alessi's. I'm telling you, in qualifying practice, it was on. And Alessi had already done his final lap. Yes. And he's got the fast time. But Dungey was still on the heater. And he comes by. He was one of the final bikes to even come through. And he notches that 205. Take us through this uh, Josh Grant crash here. Yeah, watch on the left side of your screen right here. Grant high sides a little bit. Wow. Hits that rut. Wow. He hit hard. That is like riding one of those PBR bulls and things going back and <laughs> forth, and it's just. And uh, he was able to avoid the bike, and Dungey didn't land on him, but still took a big hit anyway. Opa, the number 33, it's all right. Man, that's just, those just flick you around, yeah. and they really disorientate you. You know, you kind of, it takes a second to find your bearing, but the number one thing that you look for, especially because all the bikes come through on the left side right there, the number one thing that you're aware of is get off the track. Yes. Right? Yep. So there's going to be uh, 38 other bikes coming through. So we hope uh, Josh is all right. Certainly has been putting in some good rides on that Jeff Ward race in Kawasaki. Yeah, but I really thought this could have been the moto where we saw uh, the good rides turn to great for Grant. But he's going to be out of contention in this one. The focus goes back to the number 800, who has a five-second lead over Ryan Dungey. We talked to Alessi earlier uh, yesterday. What did he say? I'm little, fast here. That's right. A little motivation. Mm -hmm. He likes this racetrack, and he's showing it right now. Building up a big gap over your series leader. Back at Washougal, Jason Wygant, Jeff Emig, and Tiffany Simons keeping on top of all the action in the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. There's Mike Alessi trying to get away from Ryan Dungey. Alessi, one of the greatest starters we've ever seen in this game. He knows how to burn fast laps early, and that's exactly what he's doing here, Jeff Emig. Well, he definitely knows how to put some fast lap times in. He likes this track. He's looking great. He's turning 207s um, really fast, but I think Dungey right now is stepping it up. We're coming to the finish line. It was 4.2 seconds last lap. It was 5.1 the lap before. But we'll see. Yeah, Dungey is definitely closing on a lesson. Catch an all-new The Ultimate Fighter of Brazil as the last featherweight semifinal spot is on the line. That's tomorrow at 10 Eastern, only on Fuel TV. The lead now, 2.5 seconds. As you can see, Dungey is in your screen. Michael Lessie riding with a serious sense of urgency right now. He wants this moto win. Could today be the day? We are looking at the countdown clock top of the screen, folks. It's a 30 minute and two lap moto. So only about 11 minutes have gone by so far, not even a third of the way into this one. And Alessi's always been strong, like we said, early in the races. It's late in the race where Dungey seems to find his stride. And as we get near the halfway point, it sure seems like Dungey is finding the good lines and finding some speed. Yeah, he just is, is carrying a lot of momentum. Fitness is great. I mean, when a guy is in that sort of uh, mode like Dungey's in right now, he's really tough to beat. But Michael Lessi seems to be one of, if not the only rider in this class that each and every time he lines up, he believes that this is the moto. Mm -hmm. even, even if it ends up not being the moto, he lines up again. He says, okay, this is the moto. He's not afraid to step up and challenge Ryan Dungey but right now, you come down off of that main peristyle jump. You can see the fans used to love coming through this section. The fans are hanging over the fence, cheering you on. But Dungey's here. He's close. Well, uh, catching Alessi, one thing, passing him is another. He was very difficult to get around last week at Millville. He can ride the wide bike if that's what it's going to take, and it might take that now because Dungey has got the lead down to about nothing. Yeah, but the difference now, Jason, is that Dungey is now catching the roost off the back of Michael Lessie's bike, and you see through some of those sections, Dungey's trying to come tight, you know, tight out of the inside of the turn or go wide here, zigzag around, and that's the difference from maybe if he was, you know, another second back or maybe, uh, you know, another 10 bike links back is you wouldn't have to worry about that roost. At this track, this hard clay, that stuff hurts, and it makes a difference. Getting into the first set of lap riders here. 17 minutes and two laps to go on this moto. How long can Alessi hold on? Can he hold on all the way to the end? He did tell us last week, you know, the goal is to just lead as many laps as possible each week, and you got to figure one of these weeks. A lot of laps led might lead to a moto win. 
And then a lot of moto wins could lead to an overall one of these days. So he's trying to take it step by step. Yeah, and that's what builds your confidence. I mean, I, you know, um, I remember back in my career, it was just a little bit, a little bit. You lead 10 minutes, then you lead 15, and you keep trying, and you're building your confidence, you're building your fitness, and you're building your belief in yourself. And then pretty soon, it seems like that through that transition with all that hard work and determination, that all of a sudden you get lucky, you know? Uh, and uh, Michael Lessi is, is hoping, hoping to get lucky right now uh, here today in Washougal, but he's putting on a strong ride here in Moto 1. Yeah, I've heard a lot of the team guys talk about that. It's almost a catch-22. To believe you can win, you have to win. But to win, you have to believe it. You almost need something to fall in your favor first. It's when you get that victory that first time that it's a lot easier from there on out. So that's what Alessi's hoping for here. And, and you, you and I have talked about it a lot of times. Maybe Dungey's going quicker right now, but the more pressure that Alessi can put on, the more odds are that maybe Dungey makes a mistake. Yeah, and you notice Alessi's starting to ride some insides right now. Dungey is all over him. These guys are going to hear the crowd once again in this section. If Alessi can keep to those insides and guard those insides at a four, right there, look at Dungey right there, just got a face full of dirt, lands off this jump, tries to get to the left. Now watch him, he's going to go back to the right, or actually backed off a little bit right there. Okay, lost a little bit of time, but you just have to put the pressure on. You have to, if you're Michael Alessi, you got to hit your lines perfectly. You got to keep your momentum going. Dungey's not a rider that you have to worry about you know, pulling any dirty sort of move like he's going to take you out or anything gnarly. He he usually just finds a line and just finds a way past. But this track here today is different. You notice how narrow the track is through some of these sections. It's not like a week ago in Millville or when we were at uh, Red Bud. If Dungey's going to make a pass, he's got to pick and choose his spots, lay off in certain spots, and then say, OK, I know I've got a line here or there. Soak up some of that roost for a few turns and then make it happen. But if it doesn't happen, then he's kind of got to back off again and uh, be, be, you know, really patient and be smart, which we know Dutch is great. Just explain what is it about the dirt or the soil here that makes that roost hurt so much more than at some of the other tracks? Well, it's hard clay and there's some rocks and stuff in there, but it hurts. I mean, I don't know what the analogy would be, but, you know, you take a handful of gravel and have somebody throw it at you. But it's Man. much, much harder than that. And, uh, and it definitely plays a role at a track like this. These riders have an 11 second gap over the third place rider, Weimer. Look at them using the very edge of the racetrack and then some to try to find a good line of the famous horsepower hill. Yeah, and back in the days, you would just crest the top of that. Now with the power of these 450s. Wow. You know, and I'm talking the 90s, of course, in my well, career. I know you're talking You the barely 90s, get over the yeah. top, and especially on your, on your 125. These 450s, they just go flying off the top. And, and one thing that is so great about these machines these days is that you can flat land jumps like this. You can come down off of this massive drop off here and you can land the bike in a flat area without a downside and the suspension and the, and the chassis setup just soaks it up. It's amazing what these bikes do. Here's that section you talked about. They jump back in in view of the fans. They're pumped up now. They've got a race for the lead. Dungey trying some different lines. Lost a lot of ground through this section the previous lap. Staying a little closer this time. Yeah, and this is where you get into the shadows, the shaded area of the track. It plays tricks, uh, you know, on your mind with your eyes because the dirt's really light where it's dry. Then you get down into these shaded areas. It's sun to shade, sun to shade, and this dirt, especially right in this section, it's always dark and it's always tacky through there. But then these bumps start to develop. And you never know if there's a little rock here or there that's going to be in the line and sh shake it up. Halfway point. All this work Alessio has put in, and he's only halfway to a moto win. He's still going to have to deal with Dungey for another 13 minutes and two laps. And now Dungey is really pouring it on. Here he goes to the outside, which will turn into the inside. That and was Alessio close. Him to it. That was so close, Jason. And that's where Dungey's saying, OK, in that section before the fit, or, you know the finish line over the whoops through there i got it i got to get close and i know that i can do it now the interesting thing will be is if alessi says okay well dungey makes a little mistake right there but if alessi says okay i'm going to jump out to that second line and try that and give up the inside how that will play out so we'll see when we get around uh, a little over a lap a little under a lap from now Take us through what happened here to the number five. Lost a little bit of ground. Yeah, same section here where we seen Josh Grant go down earlier. But Dungey, of course, is going way to the inside. Oh, he's, uh, took the middle line. This is a new line. He's been going uh, off to the right over here. 
He switched it up to the middle and just got his weight a little bit to the left side, a little bit to the outside, but luckily not a big mistake, just a little mistake. Interesting history between these two riders. Alessia has been very respectful of Dungey. Gives him credit every week. Just says he's riding phenomenal. I'm doing everything I can, but the guy's just on it. But uh, professionally, these two have crossed paths a couple times. Alessia used to be the lead dog on the Suzuki factory team. And then when Dungey moved up to the 450, uh, Alessia moved on. And then Alessia was once on this Red Bull KTM team that Dungey rides for now. And eventually Dungey took his spot there. So I'm sure Alessi would love to be the one to end Dungey's win streak right now. Although, like I said, he has been very respectful of your series points leader. You haven't seen any actual, you know, personal feud or bad blood, but he's got to be motivated, Alessi, right now. Well, most people that know Mike Alessi's history within motocross, he came in from the amateur ranks, um, highly touted, uh, made, made a lot of enemies along the way. Um, and uh, and he paid the price for it at times. It seems like now he's much more mature. Uh, even his father, who's one of the technical directors on this Moto Concepts team, uh, maybe a little more uh, respected now. Everything's kind of settled down that way. Um, oh, and Alessi, oh, that was that inside line. It was blocked anyway. It was all good. They both got through the same line. They just put the 36 of Kyle Regal lap down. Another rough weekend for Regal, who they tell me has just been struggling mightily with arm pump. They've tried to everything they can to try to solve that. He runs good for a few laps and the arms just tighten up. He can barely ride the bike and now he's a lap down. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting uh, scenario that's going on over there that Joe Gibbs racing to the Yamaha team. That'd be pretty frustrating because there's a lot of effort that goes into that team. They've got great people on board, uh, but for whatever reason here with Regal, this is just not working out. And we're almost 20 minutes into the moto now. So 10 minutes in. Is that, that Mike uh, Genova on, on the uphill right there, I, I cheering on his rider? Yeah, that's the team owner of uh, Alessi's Moto Concepts team. You better be cheering. Because like I said, about 10 minutes into this race, Dungey was starting to close on Alessi. 10 minutes later, Dungey is still in the number two spot. Alessi hanging on about as long as he has at any point this year. Here goes Dungey again. Down to the inside. Alessi's going to have this left-hander covered unless Dungey can rail. No, I thought he was going to run the high line and make it work. Couldn't yeah, make it happen. It definitely comes together there. Sometimes that outside just starts to work out, and you can swoop around into the right-hander. But here we go. Dungey's starting to put the pressure on right now. Lap times uh, at a 2.08 last time around. Unless he was actually about a half a second faster. But, of course, Dungey has closed it back up since then. And uh, Moto Concepts, the parent company, is called Leisure Concepts. And they are based, I believe, in uh, uh -oh, Spokane, Red Cross Washington. Flag. Oh, riders down to this section. They're going to back their pace down. No passing through there. They get through it clean. Did not see which riders were down. Uh, but I was, I was going to say, the parent company of Moto Concepts based in Spokane, Washington. So they have a lot of employees here cheering on Mike Alessi. Could he deliver a victory for them? We hear that was top Jimmy. Jimmy Albertson down through that tree section. Another crash for him. Hope Here we okay. go. Lapped rider, Dungey going way wide. Alessi slams the door. This looks like uh, 585, I believe. 589, sorry, Olsen. So he's running 28. These riders have already lapped up into the 20s, and they are flying right now. Last lap was a 210 for both riders. That's because of this lap traffic. Now, right there, getting past another rider. Alessi very wisely goes to the inside. Slides out just a little bit. That's going to allow Dungey to close up. Now, Dungey trying to go around the outside this time. Let's see who can stay low. Dungey with a lot of momentum up Horsepower Hill. KTM Suzuki. And Alessi able to hold him back. There's that big drop away you're talking about. Now, this is in the back. You park somebody, you do it back here. See, no, no witnesses if you're going to do it back there. I, I, I tell you, it is so stressful. It is so difficult to ride. Wow. With a guy like that. Oh, and unless he slams the door to the inside, Dungey really starting to put the pressure on. But unless he has been able to withstand every challenge that Dungey puts up, Dungey around the outside, is it enough? Oh, man, Alessi just riding with eyes in the back of his head everywhere Dungey goes. Alessi ends up on the inside. Yeah, but he's had a, he's gotten a bad rap, probably from me and other other people about looking Whoa! behind. Dungey almost into the fence in the crowd. Wow, okay, they wanted to see action, maybe not quite like 
that as Alessi, I don't know if Alessi actually took the line away there. I'm not sure what happened. That was so close. Oh, yeah. That could have changed. You catch the a moto of the day, everything. Yeah, you catch a foot peg or bar on the, on the fence there, and that would be really bad news. Now, the red and white flags are out through this section. This lap around, that's the wheels on the ground flag. You're not allowed to double any of the jumps when those are out. So apparently a serious situation there. Is Dungey eventually going to get frustrated with this, especially when he ends up off the racetrack in a section? He always plays it so cool. Well, with six minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, oh it goes down. down! This could be the opening Alessi was looking for. Now, what happened was that one of those slick spots. You see the shiny dirt down there you've been talking about all yeah. weekend. Yeah, now I actually, um, Earlier today in qualifying practice, I've walked that section. There was a nice outside line. Now watch right here. Dungey goes wide, makes a big mistake. Look how close he is to the edge of the fence. He actually banked off of a little bit of dirt that was right at the bottom of the fence post. Now this is the big one here. Watch him go ahead. See the rail around the top? Riding the rim right there, and the, just has no integrity. It blows out the top of the berm. Well, Jeff, you talked about it. They know they maybe don't match up on speed to Dungey, but you got to figure out a way to win one way or another. Alessi may have figured it out. We're back checking in on our one to watch. Good to see you. The 75 of Josh Hill has not raced a uh, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross event, I believe, since 2009. And that was uh, the first half of that season. He eventually ran out with a back injury. So it has been several seasons since we've seen him. Here he is back in action at his home race here in Washington. And he could score some points. He's in the 19th position right now. Josh Hill, who had a terrible leg injury that he actually incurred trying to learn to do a backflip. He's going to uh, participate in the X Games a few years ago. And it was about as bad of a leg break as we have seen. It has been a long road back for Hill. Great to see him back out here, healthy, riding well and maybe even score a point. That's not too shabby for your first race in a couple of years. Yeah, well, actually, where he sets right now, it's worth two points. And I tell you, it's difficult to step into this championship round nine. Okay, the other riders have already had 16 motos of racing under their belt, tons of practicing and training and that intensity that comes with racing. And uh, so for him to step in right now, tough thing to do, so I can say he's doing a pretty good job so far. Tomorrow, UFC Tonight, the official news and information show of the UFC brings you a special fight edition. That's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, only on Fuel TV. So that's uh, Josh Hill, and right behind him actually is Josh Grant in 20th. Grant, remember, was running second early in this moto, had a big crash. Both of these guys showing some toughness as uh, Grant able to bounce back up. Wait a minute! We have a battle for the lead? So you talk about toughness. Ryan Dungey, he is on the gas. Now he squares up Alessi. They come up Horsepower Hill once again, side by side. I believe Dungey's got it this time. And Alessi had the opportunity to win this one. He still might get it, but a lot of mistakes. The last lap or two, he ran a 2.12 lap time. He'd been in the 2.08s for most of this one. Dungey ran a 2.07. Dungey made up four and a half seconds in one lap, and here he goes to the outside. Yeah, Alessi just backed off too much after Dungey disappeared from that ball. Now the intensity is going to come back. This is when it's tough. You just backed off it. Now the pressure's back on. This is when your heart rate starts to rise. Your breathing starts to accelerate. This is the point where you start to hang on a little bit tighter. Because once again, you've got the red plate holder, Ryan Dungey, back on you. And, the, and now you're closer to the, to the finish of this race. And you start thinking, OK, Am I going to win this? Can I hang on? And all this other pressure starts to happen. It's really tough to keep your focus right now. Let's see if Mike Alessi can do the same thing as last time. Hold his line and force Dungey into another mistake. Now this section, we did have some caution flags out and we still have it through there. So Dungey cannot challenge Alessi through this one lane section through the trees. Now they come back out of there heading toward the finish. And Alessi's not going to get bailed out by the clock. You see there's 24 seconds to go. They got here 20 seconds later. The two laps to go sign would have come out, but it uh -oh. does not. So it's three laps to go. That was huge. Wow. 14 seconds, about what, 16 when they came by. Yep. So three laps. Watch Dungey around the outside here. That's the hot line. And Alessio so Rice some aggressive through every one of these corners. Yeah, but look at Dungey. What a lesson here for all the young motocrossers. 
even the vet riders that are out there. <laughs> this, this is what you do. You don't follow because you just never know when somebody's going to slip up. If you, if you ride a different line, find a, find a way by right here. He is definitely Dungy. I mean, this guy is so dialed in. He is so fast right now. Ah, look who's looking in. Our series champion, Ryan Villapoto, also a native of this area. Of course, out for the summer with a knee injury. And he's watching his battle very closely. Old rival with Michael Lessie. And of course, he battled Dungy for this race win and this championship a year ago. Oh, Certainly a uh, spectator. He's got some intimate knowledge of these two. Yeah, and you know he wants to be out there, especially oh, yeah. here at Washougal, his hometown national, if you will. And uh, he's every bit as good as these two riders that we're looking at right now. Now, Dungy trying a different line. Going to try to go down the inside right there. Alessi being a little stingy, even getting off into the mud. Definitely aware of, of where Dungy is at and just guarding those inside. We'll just talk about that a little bit. The, the word of motocross, Jeff, is always to never look back. Alessi's not looking back, but he seems to know where Dungy is. Whoa, there we go again over that big jump. How does Alessi do that? Is that just a racer's instinct? Oh, yeah, well, especially with the 450s. You hear it back there. Oh, okay. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Alessi taking a little look over his shoulder there and make sure Dungy wasn't on the inside. But Dungy is flowing through his turns. He's capable of a 207. Alessi ran a 212. Dungy a 211 last time by. As of course, they've got this uh, section through there where now it looks like they've got Jimmy Albertson off the track. Yeah, it's cleared up so they can straight up race through there. This is going to be the two laps to go sign as they come through the finish this time. There it is. A and the uh, good news is the uh, the 48 of Albertson who was down in that section we hear he is awake and responsive. He was taken to the Asperis, uh Mobile Medic Center for evaluation. Hope uh, Top Jimmy's okay. Here is Dungy going to try Alessi again. Tried the third line. Now looking back out to the outside once again. Just He's trying everything he can to get past Alessi. He knows Alessi's capable of it, especially this deep in the moto, especially with these lapped riders coming through. Well, obviously, this late endurance and all that is going to be a factor. Oh, no, Josh Hill uh, out of the race. Not sure what the and situation this is. is. This we is, did hear he crash. This is just the there before the uh, mechanics the area. Man, I just hope he's okay. Here we go back to the leaders. Going up horsepower hill again. And threading the needle around lap traffic. Anyway, I was going to say, obviously, fitness, huge factor 30 minutes into a battle like this. But what about just digging down deep in adrenaline? I mean, obviously, the, both these guys have put out a ton of effort already. Can Alessi, is this, can you just grit it out to the finish line, even if you're tired with this little oh. amount of racing left? Yeah, right there. He got into that rut and hammered the throttle and almost fell to the inside. His legs, his inside mm -hmm. legs starting to drag a little bit right now. The body's screaming, the lactic acid's building up, the muscles are fatigued, but it's worth it. Alessi, he is laying it all on the line right now, just as I predicted that here this first moto would be the perfect opportunity to take advantage of the weather and the track and All a right. great start. And so, oh, Dungy off the track once again. Oh, that could and be an opening. Back on. I just want to give a call here. The 75 of Hill getting back on the bike. Good to see. Hopefully that means he's okay. And uh, maybe get back into this race. Not going to get points at this point, but uh, just ride for pride right now. And speaking of pride, I, I don't Alessi know about have it. I, I feel like I'm on Mike Alessi's bike right now. My heart rate <laughs> stopped getting nervous. Uh oh, okay, here we go. This is Dungy once again. Hello. That, that's twice. That's twice. <laughs> we but don't want to try the third time. You know what they say about that. I know, but in Dungy's defense, I think he knows that's one of the few areas he has an opening, so he has no choice but to send it through there. Last lap. This is where Dungy went down earlier. The race is on. Mike Alessi has been stellar so far. No mistakes. Just hanging on, doing everything he can to keep his momentum going. Look at right there through the turn, trying to carry as much corner speed as he can. Now. We've got through that section where Dungy was close. Does he have another place to make the move? Could it be Horsepower Hill? Could he get the KTM low to the ground and outdrive him up the big mountain here? And they're headed toward that section. Right hand turn, and here it is Horsepower Hill. One of the longest, fastest straightaways and steepest climbs. Not this time. Unless he's got the line. 
Look at these guys. She cleared the top of that with so much speed, and literally at certain sections, the tires are only about six inches off the ground, and then the backside of the jump just falls away. This, this was a key spot right here where Denji was close. Follows in line this time. KTM guys cheering Denji on. Mike Alessi off the peristyle one more time. It's gonna be close. Alessi's last moto win was at the first round of the 2010 championship at Hangtown. He has not won a moto in over two years. He's about a half a lap away from getting it done. Uh, Dungey on that outside line. I don't know if it's going to work. We're headed toward that jump where he's had his struggles. Oh, and Dungey gets a little close to the lapper right there. You notice he kind of had his right arm tucked. That makes me think that, that he, he felt like he was going to go to the right near the lapper. It's going to be close right here without any mistakes. Michael Lessie could have the win. Back down into the tree section one time. Couple of turns to go. Dungey running out of time. We've only got two corners left. Once they emerge from the trees, Mike Alessi may emerge with his first moto win of the season, his first in two years, and he's going to do it right in front of the home base of his moto concepts team. Mike Alessi wins here at Washougal, and a 10 moto win streak for Dungey is complete. Bit of a high sign there from Dungey. Dungey usually throws respect out no matter how it goes down, win or lose. Cannot say unless he didn't earn that one. That was everything he had to get that moto win. He has got to feel good. And he wants to congratulate Dungey. <laughs> Is that not enough Interest congratulations? Interesting what? little exchange right there. <laughs> how, much, how much love do you want him to give you? He got second. All right, all right. <laughs> we, are now, we are now in a politeness race here. Who can out-polite each other at the finish? Uh, unless he's confused. Uh, hey, you won, Mike. Celebrate that. Great job. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's over here, Moto One at Washougal Motocross Park at the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, and we have a new winner, Mike Alessi, taking his Moto Concepts machine to the top spot. Let's send it down to the podium with Mike and Tiffany. Mike, earlier today we spoke, and you told me this is racing. Anything can happen. Your very first win in two years. You stopped the streak of Ryan Dungey's 10 straight moto wins. How hard did you work for this one? I worked extremely hard. I got a great start. Can't thank Dunlop enough for great tires. All the fans here just supporting me is just awesome. Moto Concepts being out behind me, you know, we're the underdogs. And, you know, nobody wanted to take a chance on me this season. And Moto Concepts did. And I feel like we're the underdogs right now. And it's just, it's so humbling to be able to battle every weekend, especially with a, a superb class act, Ryan Dungey. He is the he, he's the fastest guy right now in my eyes he's so fast and uh he rode an exceptional race i know he fell over there but he came back and put on a great show for the fans for about that was i think about 36 minutes so <laughs> it was a great moto um i can't thank all the fans enough my sponsors jt racing my new 2013 gear i don't know if you get to check it out it's pretty nice and uh, uh mb1 suspension working so good tough engines fmf dunlop just all the fans were supporting me. They're going crazy right now. I want to ask you, because obviously with a guy like Dungey behind you, you're never safe. It seemed like you really took care of those inside turns and protecting him. How aware of how close the two of you were, were you? I knew he was there. I saw his front fender going up the uphills and in some of the turns. I was just trying my best to protect those insides, and I knew the only way to make him pass me was to have to go around me on the outside. And as long as I protected all the insides, and I just rode strong and steady. I was gonna be good. I, when he fell, I started making some mistakes, started getting nervous, I tightened up. Then it was weird, because when he got back on me, I picked up the pace again, it was weird. So, um, it's great to finally get my first win. Um, thank you to my, my fans again. You guys are really supportive on Twitter and uh, Facebook, Instagram, thank you guys. I'll see you second moto. Congrats, guys. And we'll see if Mike can turn a first Moto win into an overall win through Moto2. We'll talk to Ryan Dungey when we return. The Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by the championship proven Kawasaki KX450F. Ride like a champion. By RockyMountainMC.com, your one stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. RockyMountainMC.com, get ready. And by Suzuki Auto's all-wheel drive lineup. Visit Suzuki.com for more details. Welcome back to Washougal. 
great racing here. We'll have a couple weekends off after this, and then we'll resume our coverage of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Returning live to Fuel TV on Saturday, August 11th. That's our next race from the venerable Moto X 338 in Southwick, Massachusetts. That'll be live on Fuel TV, so don't miss us in a few weeks. Let's send it back down to the podium with Tiffany and our runner-up. Ryan, all season long, Michael Essie has talked about how he was going to try to figure out a way to prevent you from winning. He did that today. It seemed like you were trying everything, but nothing was working. Yeah, I was, uh, that, that after the first couple laps, kind of got settled in, was able to kept, run him down, and, you know, I was just searching for a line, trying to make a couple passes. Some of my lines <clears throat> just weren't cutting it, so I uh, had to switch it up a little bit, but uh, I, I got my front end up high on the bank, and I just lost the front end, but was able to regroup, catch him. You know, yeah, he rode a great race. I, I couldn't seal the deal, but uh, he rode an awesome ride. He's a great rider. You know, it's uh, all these guys are awesome. So give him a good start. You know, they can't let him uh, get away too long because they'll run away with it. But uh, he rode an awesome race. And, um, you know, I felt good. Just glad I could get up rebound and uh, look forward to Moto2. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. And here is your upcoming schedule as Dungey takes a second place finish for the first time in about two months. We will have uh, a highlight show of this Washougal National on the NBC Sports Network in a couple of days. And then again, a couple of weekends off, and they'll be racing at Southwick, Massachusetts, Fuel TV, and NBC Sports Network providing the coverage of that event. And we'll send it back down to the podium with Tiffany and our third place finisher. Jake, congratulations. Third place, picking up almost where you left off a week ago. We saw a lot of guys go down out there. Can you describe the conditions of the track for us? It's tough, you know, every year we come here, it's, uh, we already know coming in, but it's slippery and it gets choppy and you, you got to be careful because you'll put it down on the ground quick. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stoked to be up here this moto. Hopefully, I didn't ride very good in practice and uh, that moto I felt was a little shaky, but I got a good start and got a solid finish. So I have a good gate pick next moto and uh, come out swinging next moto. We'll see you in moto two. Good luck. Thank you. Guys. Well, we're treated to a great 450 race here, and all season long, the 250s have really been the ones to watch. Last week at Millville, Blake Bag had a bad start. Ran into the back of a down Marvin Muscan. That didn't stop him. He worked his way all the way into the lead, and with that incredible pass, took the first moto win. And a similar scenario broke out in moto number two. Here he is taking second place away from Justin Barsha. Then he'd get around Eli Tomac. But just when it seemed like Bag had it under control, he crashed, and Tomac took the win. What's in store? Find out next.